All right. So getting an opportunity here to talk a little bit more basketball. This is actually a game that I have been wanting to go back and watch and uh, break down a little bit. I have not seen too much of this game. So, and again, I don't know many of these clips, but this is the Duke Gonzaga game back earlier in the year when Gonzaga was one and Duke was five, six games into the season. There's a number of great players here and people that I like to watch. So um, we will go through this and we'll figure out how we can uh, get the clips and all this, but um, a lot of teams are running this. I believe it's called a horns action where we get a high ball screen from both ends. Let the point guard determine which side to come off and bury two people down low. So let's talk about the people to watch in this game. It's going to be Bancaro, um, definitely for um, Gonzaga. And then the matchups it looks like to start are going to be, I, I, I forget, um, it's Williams. I was right in my mind. Uh, Williams is 15 here. Uh, we can tell here, Bancaro, Wendell Moore. This is a couple of months ago, but Wendell Moore has uh, really turned it on and become quite a uh, great player for them. I, I don't know how he ends up doing in this game. And then uh, uh, Kells, I believe, or Keels, Trevor Keels is their point. So, uh, but anyway, Bancaro's here and Holmgren and Timmy are the main players for Gonzaga. Drew Timmy um, is here. And then uh, Chet Holmgren, most people know about, is the um, here. So we have two freshmen matched up, right? Talked about, uh, actually, in the mock draft I saw earlier this morning, we have a uh, potential number one pick in Chet Holmgren, two pick in Bancaro, and I think they're going back and forth on those. So anyway, it looks like it's a false screen, and it's just kind of a quick roll. And so it's, it's as simple as that to a seal probably here. So I don't know. Again, I haven't watched this game for a while. But we're looking at, you know, if they're looking to seal. So ball at a light ball, a live ball at the elbow. This is not where I believe he's actually trying to post, but it's actually a more of a set to get him the ball there. What we typically see if the ball gets in there, it doesn't get in there. Right. So they don't get what they want with the action there. But like, here's how we're going to play pick and roll. Right. So what I like about this and it's hard for me to go back um, there used to be a, a, a control to go. So they show, but here's, here's what's great. And th what I'm considering working on with my group is that the ball is being taken away. So now we have a strong side with, um, with Wendell Moore. So Wendell Moore's coming off this going to his right. And what they do, what they, they hard showed it and doubled. So they doubled this getting big here. Chet's playing in the paint and we're all matched up on the strong side as he rolls to the right. But watch this guy. This guy leaves his man to go support the role, right? So Williams, uh, Mark Williams was on the roll here, but this guy has to support until, until Timmy can recover, right? So that's the whole defensive matchup right now here, you know, on the catch, let's say he's open where we would want Holmgren to, to go and recover and Timmy to roll weak. Right. So what I would coach here or what I would consider, right, this is Duke. Right. And the greatest coach of, you know, of all time. Right. In terms of wins. Right. So the ball came strong side, stunted to the roll, recovered back on the weak side, kick to the weak side of the floor. Now we have an open post. Right. With Williams. Right. Um, now you could switch out and pick up weak. That's what I that's what I would probably coach on if we were going to red or double or or anything with the post there. Right. Is that. So, but he recovers, there's the catch, there's the show, there's the high hands that we're recovering here uh, to Timmy. So we're all matched up. Okay, so the horns action didn't do much. The live elbow catch ultimately by Bancaro didn't work. We ran a, uh, just ran it into a pick and roll with a red or a double and then, and then nothing happened, right? So nothing super is going on right here, right? But there's the hard drive, right? The hard drive, no help. To Kells, Keels, I believe is, is uh, how you pronounce it. So Keels doesn't get the matchup or the the double here. Doesn't get the double here. Like nobody's stunting to that. Nobody's too worried. They're worried about matchups here, matchups here, and then the Bancaro matchup there. So nobody goes. There's nobody helping, right? So you could say that's scouting report defense. You could say that's. Um, you know, that they just know that we're not going to leave these three open for threes and we're going to play one-on-one -on -one with the drive. So there's that. He gets into the paint, good one-on-one -on -one defense. There's the kick, right? You know, one good drive, one good kick deserves another. So now uh, Chet Holmgren is not in a position. Look at how open he is to the middle, right? We're here uh, with his back essentially to the ball, not in a position to drop step here to help. So we're driving it here, right? 
you can see, and this is what we, and it's hard for me to rewind it unless we end up right at the beginning of the play, which is, but here, here's that ball screen. Here's the hard show. He goes over the top. So we're hard showing and doubling and redding and we're going over the top, right? And we stunt to the roll. So all this sort of stuff we just talked about. Here's the drive, but watch this. So there's the kick, right? And then look how, like, look how the closeout happens. And I'm not saying, you know, again, this is uh, the two of the best coaches in the nation, right? And the best players in the nation, right? But definitely this is open. So now I'm curious about that first drive, right? See how he has to totally open up and drop step and sprint and run. And we're talking about the first player in the draft, right? We're talking about not a ton of contact here on the first pound, the first pound, the first step, not a ton of contact by Bancaro, but there is there. So that's the difference between just okay and elite and strength and toughness and getting to the mouth of the rim against 7-2, right? We have 6-10 and 7-2. There's no help by anybody from Gonzaga on either of the drives. There was a hard show on the ball screen. The second pound, the second step, we have great contact by a strong guy who finishes left against 7-2, right? That, and so that's what's great about the shot blocker, right? Is that we have a seven foot two guy that can block shots, right? So now we're rolling here. One quick outlet. Here's Gonzaga starting five as it rolls up. These are the two we mentioned Drew Timmy, Chet Holmgren. I don't know too much except for Nebhard. I don't know too much about these other guys. I think Nebhard might be the next great player there, right? So here's what I like. And this is, you know, for all our, our guys that may be watching this for our basketball group, there was a lot to pick up there. So the big takeaways on the other end of the floor were, um, you know, definitely Bancaro, um, you know, the weak side of the floor picking up on pick and roll, but definitely Bancaro on a second pound contact drive, right? The things I automatically like here, and you could say Gonzaga is just doing this, right? That it's their offense. One, we run wide. We got a quick outlet. We're going to reverse the ball possibly through a four man here. Right. So he's immediately going to catch and possibly look to change it back unless it's a stunt here, ball fake, and then a kick back to a post. Right. This is one of the he's a first or second team all American. Right. Love the guy. Right. But what I like about this, and it could be by design, but Williams did not let him get to where he, he met him here. He met Drew Timmy at elbow or at slot and didn't let him get to where he wanted. Right. So I don't know if that's by design. They look like they are kind of weak there in terms of like, there's not like, Hey, I'm not going to get the ball. The play's not called for me or whatever it is. Right. So there it is. So he stands up. He doesn't immediately pound it. He faces up. Right. But I like that we're bodied up here. Look how far pushed out they are. It looks like we're just cutting through and filling up on the weak side of the floor, but there's the reverse that he's trying to get not great action here. If he was trying to reverse it, they're not moving or cutting with any purpose to get the ball zero zero. So he's got to come back. One pound, no action. This is what I wish youth uh, and our basketball program would do. Ball's here. We're not flat. We're not behind. And we're not level. He's up this line. He is defending the best player in the nation or a first team or second team All-American. And he's up the line defending, right? It'd be better if his, you know, it may be, you know, his butt was more to the ball. His back was more to the ball. He was more in a dial stance, right? Because, but Drew's in, in not in a position to get anything. So we're running this into dribble handoff because we couldn't reverse the ball, right? So not great automatically, right? You have to be able to beat him to the spot. You have to stay on top of this with vision. So what do we do here? If he, if he, if he turns it here and gets here, where's the help? Is it Williams, right? So he stunts and gets it. One pound immediately pick up, staying on top of the All-American and in a position to help here, right? So everything's good. One pound and a look and right up to a jump shot, right? Contested. I don't know if that's it. Like, I have no idea if this shot goes in or not, right? And these are, you know, essentially pros, right? You know, playing college basketball, you know, there's a lot of pros on the floor here. You know, you could say Neb Nebhart's the pro who's shooting it, two pros here, right? Definitely two or three pros with there. So that could be a great shot for them. No block out here. Drew Timmy's already cycling back, didn't compete for it. And so we already have our bigs and our All-Americans getting back. No rebound, no rebound, contested shot and, and all that, right? So, you know, I don't know. You know, it, it, these are the best coaches in the nation, right? So it's just all perspective. This game can be played a lot of different ways. Here's what I love. Uh, automatically, 
love the fact that we've got a big that's running the floor hard. Maybe that's the game plan. Maybe they drew Timmy Chet Holmgren. Hey, Mark Williams is a heck of a runner. He can run a three, four second transition and he doesn't stop running. So we're not going to give up that bucket, right? So maybe that's why they get back. So they're supported by their bigs, but then we have two back here on the weak side that should be supporting like right here. I'm a big fan of lane line. If the ball is in the slot or pushed over, I'm into lane line runners as opposed to outside the lane. He's kind of lane line extended to support the drive. He's in no man's land, I think, in terms of transition defense. In terms of transition defense, I think he should be on the lane line or not because the ball's weak. Even though the ball's not really weak, it's slot weak, right? So that's what I would say, right? But there's that drive in out dribble for like all the youth watching this. Man, that's just set up by an in-out. That's an in-out dribble. Now, this is what I mean by the possession before of being flat or behind. Level, level, or lower, right? He's level right now. Drew Timmy is level with Williams. You want to be higher, right? Uh, and so what's going to happen here, I have no idea what happens with these plays, right? But what possibly could happen is helps coming here, helps coming here. Helps not coming here. I don't believe the help is coming here. He doesn't look like he's in any position to help, right? So if the help comes from here, who's helping the helper? Like who's helping here? Is he going to pinch down and help him? Where Chet Holmgren's way out of position and Chet Holmgren's guarding a first team All-American, right? So we've got a first, second team all first or second team All-American and two first team All-Americans right here. So let's see what happens here. Here's the drive, right? So Timmy just stunts. He doesn't even step up, right? But just enough to slow him up and for him to recover, right? Good vision, good vision. When uh, Moore's funneling up, Williams is throw, going here. Now, if you're blessed to have, you know, seven foot here and six ten, you know, you could throw that up. I don't know what they do here, but that's exactly what we want. Fade away. So he drove it with an in out, got here, and we didn't stunt enough. We stunted enough to slow him up. We didn't stunt enough to make him take a bad shot because I'm not sure that's a bad shot, but enough to recover to contest. But he's also at, at essentially an elbow, right? So again, no idea, right? So a couple quick shots, but this game's going to be played at a very high pace. And you could say the, the possession before um, was a good shot off of the dribble handoff. You could say this on an in-out playing anything to the paint with its one-on-one -on -one with a slight fadeaway is a good shot. Right, so let's see what they do with the break. Big and big, okay? Um, so he's getting out and running. He's getting out and running, okay? So they don't outlet to a, a specific point guard. Their three handlers are all probably um, opportune to bring it, right? So he's changing the floor, which I love. He caught it on this side, and he's changing it there. Timmy's the trailing big. Let's see what Holm Holmgren is running, a transition screen. So immediately... The guard changes the floor. We talked to our kids quite a bit about that. And everybody else got wide. So immediately, I don't have the rebound. I'm not trying to get an outlet. I'm filling lanes and running to put pressure on the defense. I have the rebound, and I am a handler. And I'm bringing the ball up the floor, and I also want to change the floor. I have a trailing big, and the other big is either a rim runner or a, tra a transition screen. So, you know, I I'm guessing secondary action, dribble handoff, big, big. Dribble uh, screen and transition probably didn't look like it was necessarily uh, prescribed or a set action, but he looked a little uncomfortable with it. But now this seems to be all right. Dribble handoff and get low, get low and wide. Dribble handoff. Look at this. I, I again, no idea what happens, but I do know that this is open. I do know he's an All-American. I do believe that this guy's probably a pro um, coming off right. So is what's he going to do off there? So again. One little ball screen. It's hard to protect when you're trying to defend the big that is an All-American, the seven, the number one player in the draft, right? These, these guys are one and two. He's got them beat. So the help's got to come here. Williams has to help. So what do you, you know, what, what, what's the evil you want here, the devil you want, right? It's, oops, and I lost everything. So let me see if I can go back. So we want to be able to get to that ball screen right there. And it went off his hand, right? So let's see if we can go back just a little bit. There's that drive. There's the fadeaway. There's the rebound. Everybody's able to bring it. If you have great handlers, changes the floor, pseudo kind of a false ball screen, running into a ball screen with no, with no help. Let's see right there. There's the help. 
but see how Holmgren is there. He, but he gets to the mouth of the rim and Kells, Keels puts his hand in at the last minute and swipes it away. So, you know, a couple plays, everybody's kind of getting to the rim. They call the foul on it on the shot, right? So shooting free throws makes them, right? Makes at least one, right? So it's one nothing here. A couple plays at the rim. Let's see. So they get into like a diamond press, right? A one, a, a one, two, two, or a one, two, one, one, or something like that. Let's see what they're in. Okay. So it's more of a one, two, two with the bigs back, right? So here's the thing I like about what they do here. You know, seven foot, six, 10, six, 11. Let's play it aggressive up top, although they didn't, but we can always have rim protectors. You can make mistakes up here because if they go, Maybe you get a contested three, um, but the plays to the rim are going to be challenged because of size, right? If I were coaching and had you know, any level of size, I would teach these guys to be really aggressive, be hard on the ball, create dribbles, create harder passes, and it's okay to err a little bit simply because we've got good backline guys that might be able to um, contest shots, right? right? But then you've got to be running back. I, they, didn't com, com, they didn't play it terribly hard in terms of the three guards, but here they go. They broke it in, uh, on the change of the floor, two changes of the floor, right? Ball started on the right side here, got changed to the left side, dribbled up. Now we've got to skip over here. Now everybody's got to recover to the ball, right? So right here, we're already thinking, right? This is the stuff, right? That I, and I really love, we got two on one here. So somebody's got to pick up Wendell Moore. And then I like the idea of, that we've got a post player playing. This is one-on-one -on -one in the post. I don't know if he gets it. He doesn't, right? But now, where are they at? We're here, and he's rhythming them up to shoot. Again, no idea if he does or not. But what I like is, you know, you got to give credit to Gonzaga here. They matched up really well. They matched up really well against the 1-2-2 two, two press and got the matchups they kind of want, right? They're, they definitely got a matchup here that they want. And they have the matchup there that they want with Van Caro and Chet Holmgren. I don't know. So a, a quick fake, I call it, right? What I think, what I would be coaching our kids on right now is the quick fake to the feed to here and not concede this post position, right? Um, Timmy was playing it soft. We concede the position outside the paint instead of in the paint and double buried is what we say. And I like that immediate feed right there to the post to loosen everything up because look who's sprinting out. Chet Holmgren. So we're driving it here. Again, another drive. One drive, one pound, no contact, two pounds with contact. Look at Timmy attack laterally, but with high hands. And look at how immediate it is in terms of footwork and drop step for Williams to get to the mouth of the rim. So the play here is the play here is probably, you know, is to finish or throw it up, right? I have again no idea, right? But here's what's great. This guy's leaving Kells, Keels, and, and, and stunting back to Williams. So you can't do this much better other than it maybe being more up the line, right? You can't do much better here in terms of a second pound contact, right? You can't do much here because you have to play the All-American, but you're here, but we're stunting down. We're being Gonzaga, stunting down to the big. It's exactly how you have to play it. And you got to go to his body. So what's Timmy get here? Does he get a charge? Is he outside the paint? Can he get further up the line? And they called a block, right? So they called a block on just being able to drive it to the middle of the floor and play closeout basketball, right? I'm not totally convinced of the, of the call. Um, here, it's gonna, we're gonna get the call again here, but watch, there's the beat. There's the contact on the second pound. And it would have been nice, his heels are on the line. But let me rewind it real quick and just show you what I see here, right? Because, and again, it's one of these things right here. Well, I'm not getting it. So right after he makes this free throw, let's watch it. It's a diamond press. Let's see where they bring it up. It goes up the right side or however, the right side of the floor, a couple pounds, ball fake, perfect, immediate change, immediate change, one pound skip. So the ball's on the side, you know, the second side of the floor. Now we're playing closeout basketball, immediate shift, no dribble, no pound, no consideration other than to reverse the ball, right? Now we're playing closeout basketball. He had to close out. He has to close out right here. Now, so my only critique on this is, man, I wish Timmy would have taken a step up the line. 
I wish he would have been up the line one step. I wish he would have V-backed to the help the helper, a V-back is what we call it, to the, to the body of Williams to take that away. Instead, we're waiting for the contact instead of taking the contact there. That would be my, but again, you're dealing with all Americans, right? So it's, and it's all, you know, perspective of how this game can be played, right? So, um, so Wendell Moore, good drive, good, um, good quick fake is what we call it on the, um, the quick fake on the drive. And he makes uh, some free throws there, man. And, and guys and whomever's watching this, man, you've got to figure out these special situations where you're competing. Um, you know, free throws, out of timeouts, baseline, sideline out of bounds, um, all these different special situations um, late in the shot clock, those type of plays. So here's their action again, right? Now it's Timmy setting ball screen, dribble handoff, ball screen, roll. Ooh, do they have it? Right. So the only thing I don't like about this, and it's again, it's it's all perspective. This game's played a million ways. Right. But it's a dribble handoff ball screen big with the other big out. They have no ball. So they have no other big. Right. So they're opening it up for this role with the great guard that can play. So it's one pound. Both every time we've had dribble drives, we've had this saddle position by the defender. He's side by side with them. He's in a bad position right now. And it's great that. Um, this is the um, the guy that's the, probably their third best, and he's got to be guarded, right? This action I don't get, and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's bad. It could be a variety of things, but I just know that, man, he's taking his man into where I think that role is, right? So it's a pound, and we don't have it. But, man, if he wasn't there and we could get a little deeper, I still think this over-the-top action is really good. Now, this is what I do see right? Let's just take this guy out of the equation. I feel like this guy's messing everything up. If we don't have it, man, I would love the kickback and the step over, sit down, dribble and, and post feed. They're clearly not going to let Holmgren get, or uh, Chet Holmgren get anything. They're not, they're, they are locked in here big time. So what do they do? What a, it's a rough, it, I have no idea again, how this turns out. But this just looks like disaster written all over it. This looks like disaster all over it. We have no contact. We have no angle. I feel like Williams is going to steal it. My man's getting in the way of an All-American having one-on-one, -on -one, right, with position and angle and execution on the reversal. We don't have any of it. And so my man's just going to throw it in. And th this could be a dunk for all I know. I have no idea what happens here. It, this, this frame looks like a disaster. So let's see how it plays out. And he gets it. He gets it. Right. It looked like a disaster. Now, does it make sense why I would be a little irritated with this guy making that cut when it seemed like a set action of dribble handoff, ball screen roll with a post feed, right? Um, I don't love that angle. He just wasn't ready for it. I believe that more often than not is going to be stolen. But now look, we, now we've got this action, man. It, this guy should be out here. This guy should have had to have, have not been in a position to help. And I have no idea, right? So all American, right? Great hands, great feet, great catch, difficult pass, rough pass. But my man made it a little harder than it should have been, right? So now we're running, right? I like it that Timmy is running with them. So this is what, this is what young, athlete, young players and athletes have to figure out. Ball was brought up the floor. Ball was changed. It's a one pound change, right? I'm not a huge fan of it. You see the NBA, it's an immediate catch and reversal, right? But where are our bigs, right? Everybody's interchangeable. We know, know we want Williams inside. Timmy scored and he's the first one back to guard him. So that's great. But Bancaro's the four and he's just running, right? And it's okay. It's by, you know really by design, but there's a reversal dribble handoff. But we got it, right? And everything, I have no idea what happens, but I know this is open. And I know they're not playing lane line, help line basketball, right? Maybe it's because of how good they are. You could say that scouting report defense, and I don't know the scouting report, right? But I do know an All-American has the ball, right? I know a, a pro and a long-lived pro has the basketball. I know that he's opened up, right? And, and maybe that's by design, right? So it's, they're all lateral dribbles, and now we're going to play. So now we got a set, right? So we didn't get our secondary action, although it wasn't forced. And now we're just going to run our set. Now it's big on big. So let's see what immediately it looks like they're not to me. 
again, I have it freeze framed and we've been wrong before, but it, Timmy doesn't look like he's in a position to switch it. I would think if we're switching, we're playing the outside shoulder, meaning his left shoulder ready. But here's what I think should be happening. It's big on big, so we could switch it. Can Timmy guard Bancaro? Can he guard Williams? But, you know, only Mark Few right here knows that, right? And so I have no idea who can guard whom. But I do know that this ball screen is coming here, and this is what I – with with three of the best players on the floor, All-American, 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 right? So – what I would be thinking is these guys here better be stunting to the ball. Make Bancaro throw the long, diagonal, weak side pass as opposed to letting, that, letting them play, play, play this game here. So they are switching. Because clearly Chet Holm, they better be switching because Chet Holmgren's given up on defending the ball. So now we get maybe a matchup they want. But here's the thing. Chet Holmgren's being asked to now guard seven foot, and this, this guy's bigger, bigger and stronger than Holmgren. He may not be as skilled, and he may not have the perimeter game as Holmgren, but he's definitely bigger and stronger, right? And if he just, like these guys, I think, have to be two steps over, if not three, in order to take that roll away, right? And, but they're, but they're, and, and make Bancaro throw that pass over the top. What I like is he stopped. And he could, you could do this a number of ways. You could continue with your role or you could stop and seal. This guy looks like he's actually now down low and stunting, right? But that's why, that's why, that's why he's the first pick in the draft, right? So here's the play. I love it. Reversal, pound, revert, two pound, uh, dribble handoff. So that's okay. One, two. All right. Let's see how good you are at pick and roll, pick and roll defense. We're going to switch it, but we're flat. We're playing bottom foot level instead of top foot show. Big difference. Big difference in the pickup point of the handler. Bottom foot level, which is what he is, bottom shoulder level, however you want to phrase it, instead of top foot show, meaning up the line, right? So we're flat with it. So if we're flat with it against an All-American and you're going to play two men removed and you have a quick release and you're a 40% three, and he's inside, right? That's tough to play it that way, right? So, yeah, I love this stuff. You know, I love it. I like how quick they are with the ball. So look at all, all it's an immediate change. Dribble to a slot, change it through the big. He took it out of bounds. He's the rim runner. Everybody ran their lanes. I'm going to change it through the big. The big's immediately going to look to reverse it without the pound, unless it's a dribble handoff. And the guy that's coming down is looking to screen away. It's basketball. This is exactly what we're trying to teach our, our, our group here. Like it's that's this simple. Now, Holmgren puts it on the floor to do a couple things. Man, he's got a big line here to drive. We could dribble handoff and back cut, right? There's a lot going on here. No vision, which is cool, right? It happens. You don't see the ball every single time, right? But they're pointing. Like what are they? I would, I would challenge my, my group. Like what, what's he pointing and doing? He's pointing and talking. He's pointing for a purpose and a reason. But what could he possibly be saying? Switch, you know, I, so I'd be interested in the game plan of switching here, which it, it looks like it is. So here's exactly what happened. Dribble handoff first three or four possessions on the reversal. Now we've got a, uh, we've got a back cut off the dribble handoff and a dribble drive. So if he keeps his dribble alive, we've got it, right? We've got this hand, we've got it right there. But now we've got, look at, so that's why he's the second player in the draft essentially. Right, because he's able to catch the ball, top a key, right, keep his dribble, and then bust by people. Now, these are the top two people in the draft, right? So he got beat. Not great communication here, but this is why Williams is so special and needed, right? Outside the paint, you know, not necessarily outside the paint, but look at that. And look at how Wendell Moore v backs, helps the helper, covers the big, right? So it's great, but. Man, having shot blockers, great. Let's see, look at them go. So this is where youth basketball in my group and high school basketball, like it's, it's a no-brainer. We blocked the shot. He hasn't even dribbled yet. And we've got three guys about to cross half court. He hasn't even dribbled yet. I don't believe. Let's see. Change through the big. He's driving it. Williams helps. There's the block shot. There's the rebound, bam, there's the first pound. 
So he just got the ball. He pounded it once. Before the second pound there, he's already got three at half court. Three. So a block shot, a track down 50-50 ball, two pounds, and we're already rim runner, wing, wing, and keeping spaced. Right? So how perfect is this when you talk fast break basketball and going? So now he's on his third pound. He doesn't see anything. But here's what's great. So young, young kids, young coaches, like, this is great. You got to be a great three. And you got to run wide. They are in scramble mode, pointing and talking, flooding the middle of the paint. But get a rim runner. Get some dead threes. The name of our group, dead three. Get some dead threes that can shoot it because this guy doesn't know what to do. Do I cover the big? Because Holmgren's back. At least he's running and not feeling sorry for himself. We have Timmy running. He was also on the baseline. They're sprinting their tails off to cover the paint first and the rim and the hole. So this guy's got to make a decision. Do I cover the bigs until Timmy recovers or do I worry about a dead three? This guy's in a bad spot. Who's taking, like, who's taking these two? They're like, let's see, I, I have no idea, but I'm interested in how this plays out. I, it looks like he's picking the ball up. And it looks like Williams is open. They are in a bad spot because they ran so hard. One, two, rim runner. This guy's clearly turning around to taking Roach. So you got a three and you got this, right? And let's see what happens. And he's throwing it. It looks like he's throwing to Williams. Boom. Man, is that good? How good's that? So listen, for, for coaches to show clips and for players to, to study and analyze the game, he blocked the shot. He's the one that blocked the shot. Right? And so, and he's the first, and he's the first one back. And he outran everybody. Look at how he's ready to play. I'm guessing those are his hands and he's showing it. It'd be great if Roach were lower, Bancaro, all that, right? So two pounds, maybe three to a rim runner. So he blocks it on one end, rim runs all the way in three or four seconds and outran everybody. So they just got, they, they got blew up that play. Flat out got blew up. So let's see what they do here. Pass. Ooh, then a stagger. Right? So I can't, under, I, can't, I can't underestimate the value of that last possession, of stopping Chet Holmgren at the rim, blocking his shot, um, getting the 50-50 getting the ball, three pounds, guys at half court within a pound to two pounds, and then a rim runner that goes from blocking the shot right here to a layup on the other end. Man, that's, that's something you show. Now, here's a stagger away. Now, look, they're talking. No vision. Good vision because you got to watch. He's guarding Timmy. You got to watch slips and you got to watch um, seven cuts, right? And so, but these two are talking. They're not going to switch out Williams to this guy. So I'm, I'm willing to bet the game plan's this. We're switching one, twos, and threes. We're switching with you. We're switching with you. We're switching with you. And we're going to switch when Williams and Ben Carroll may come together, although they haven't yet. All right, so we're going to switch fours and fives and one, twos and threes, right? So here's that. They're talking it out. He's already stunting to get on top of the screen. Now, here's, here's, what, here's what I would coach. Who's guarding this guy? He was. Roach was. Roach was guarding him, and Kells Keels is guarding him. Okay, so this is Roach's man. So here's, here's the thing. How do you break switches? Where's the hole? So that dive right there is open. Holmgren should leak and go short corner possibly, and we should be diving right to here. If he can post, if he can play, if he, you switch it. Is he going to pop and just to let the – like Keels is in no position to help on the slip. He's already stunted up. You know, Majerus used to have this great phrase of talk, touch, switch tonight. You talk it, which clearly they're doing. You touch it. They are not touching. You switch it, and then you deny the switch. So they're talking it. They didn't touch it. They are switching it, and we haven't seen if they deny it yet. Talk, touch, switch, deny, right? So if, they if they're touching, that takes away the, the slip. So right there. And there's 
essentially a deny. But he's popping, right? And he's, and he's just staying flat. So they defended it, right? They defended this whole action. So he back cuts it, which is good, right? Um, and now, now the big's back where, now the big's back here. So now dribble handoff one pound to a back cut. So that's exactly what they're doing. So they're going to dribble to the back cut and look at that. Not by design, I believe. They wanted that stagger. The stagger was soft, but they maybe it was an action to say, hey, we're going to stagger. They're switching. We're going to pop him. He's not going to be ready for a switch and we're going to get him with the back door cut. Boom. Now who's covering Holmgren? I mean, this is emergency, right? This is an emergency play. So we should be swarming to the paint. Who's got Holmgren? He has to. It's emergency. We had to stop this. If he's still over there hugging Holmgren, then we've got a layup here, right? So by Nebhart. So we've got to be able to, he's not getting a layup. He's got to be outside the paint um, and all that. So somebody's got to V back to Holmgren. He's looking at it. Not good enough. Right? So not good enough, right? So here's the thing, right? I love this stuff. There's the rim runner. They get it out somewhat quick. Goes to Nebhart, goes there. Here's our stagger, slip, talk, but watch. Gets soft with it. He got his switch. He got his deny. He carries him out. He's soft here. He's not ready to play here. He sees it. He's got vision. His eyes are looking at it. Right there. He should be moved. Look at how, it, 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 that's him. There's no other way to say it, but it's him on the V-back. Right. And then Bancaro's covering two. That, that's basketball. There's a breakdown. There's an emergency. There's the All American. Let these guys beat you. Let's not let the seven footer get it on a dump feed. And there it is. Right. Those are big possessions. Six four. Okay. We got a three play here. Ball in the middle of the floor. Dribble handoff. Change. Williams is up. There's a flare. So dribble handoff. Guy comes up, gives it to the other small. We're running a flare action with a baseline screen with the ball in the, essentially in the middle of the floor. So there's options here, right? Not in a position right now with Kells. Not in, like, there's all, like, there's breakdowns here, right? It's all position basketball. And these are the best teams in the nation. One versus five. But is there so much in five or six possessions and two and a half minutes? of things that we, could, that we could consider getting better at, right? Here's what I'd consider getting better at. Man, if we could get tighter to that cut. Holmgren's in a position to really help it. I don't know if he's going to slip it, but Timmy's not in a position to execute on any of this, right? But there's a screen here, and maybe he plays it flat and loose for a reason. Maybe that, maybe that we're not going to throw this. I don't know if that's Wendell. Uh, if this is Wendell Moore. If he's going to throw the long flare pass. So he's bodying it up. Right. So I don't know the actions here. Right. So he's not going to throw that. So maybe Timmy's playing it right. Hey, we're going to play any flare screens with perimeter flare screen with Williams. We're going to play it loose and we're going to worry about that baseline screen because we know he can't shoot that. So that's game plan. Let them shoot it. If they're going to flare and pop, let them flare and pop with the, with Williams. Cause we don't care about Williams shooting that. Now, William wants to be a pro man, my, he's got to be able to make that shot, right? So, look, you know, he's not even closing out on him. He's not even thinking about shooting, and he's not even thinking about driving. He's thinking about changing the floor with another dribble handoff back cut. So the, being really good at these dribble handoffs and, and then being – and then having the freedom to back cut is important, right? So it's the same action we just saw down at the other end with Duke uh, defensively. This is emergency. Holmgren is big enough, obviously, to go challenge and contest that. But then who's going to cover down to Bancaro? Who's going to V back to Bancaro? There's, okay, it's a kick. It's the right action. It's the right action. It's unfortunate that Williams, like they can play that loose because Williams can't play out there. I'm not being mean, right? But here's the thing. Flair, catch, he doesn't have to be played. So you play it loose. So you can kick the ball, right? You play it loose because you can kick the ball. But here's the thing. 
I'd be so concerned about this guy. And this guy goes for 20 or 22 in the first half. That I do remember, right? And he's already hit a two, right? I would be just jamming down. Like I would, I would be coming over and really talking about getting more help side. Like let Williams throw the ball cross court to Keels over there, right? So we, we get the kick, right? So we're trying to keep these videos to a certain time limit, but uh, let's just go until a few more possessions here. A um, lot of dribble handoffs, a lot of back cuts, not a lot of flooding the paint, right? So let's see what their actions are. Some teams have all sorts of great specials out of bounds, and some people just want to get the ball inbounds, right? So we have an All-American that looks like he's cutting. We have Williams that looks like he's screaming, screening for Kells. We have Wendell Moore taking out of bounds. So there's that. There's that. And it looks like we're just one screen. One screen he goes under. One cut by Bancaro to clear it out. And one screen when we know he can't shoot it. So we're worried about the roll. But I have, I have no, again, I have no idea. But Kells looks like he's in a position to shoot. And he is. Unless that's just a heck of a shot fake. So one screen, one open three by one of their best threes. And that's what we're giving up, right? So these are the specials, right? For all the young kids out there watching this and coaches, like it can't get much simpler as a play. We're four across. We're going to cut, we're going to cut the all American through and we're just going to set a screen balls over here, get your tail over here. So we can take any sort of pick action and roll action away and stay on his body and cut and disrupt route and timing. Disrupt route and timing here instead of just being soft here and letting him figure out where the area is to get my shot. He plants there, gets his feet set. It can't get much easier. Like that can't be good enough. I can't believe Mark Few thinks that's as good as we can get it, right? So here's a change, a change. And he's, he's putting it on the floor, I believe, right? Look at the seal. We're sealing up. And that's cool to get it there because if we can get it here, we'd throw it here. There's no help side, right? And I, I'm dead, like, he loses his seal. They're back cutting it and he's keeping his dribble alive, right? And then he, he doesn't stay with his cut. So he's not clearing out. And now we're filling it back up with a big. So we didn't get the seal we wanted. We didn't get the back cut we wanted. We have a, luckily he kept his dribble alive. Now we change it. We probably run it into a ball screen, right? So we're going to run this into ball screen here. Again, look at how tight this is though. You got a guy that's a very good three. This is what's great that we have to consider as coaches and stuff and players is you got to be able to make this shot. The possession before, Williams couldn't, so Timmy just tripped around in the paint. Timmy can shoot it, which means the, their biggest player is now away from the basket, which means that if we roll correctly and we support correctly and we have to stunt correctly, that we're leaving their smallest guy right now in a position to have to guard Holmgren. And I'm not saying that's going to happen. Look at how he turns it tight. So he's getting the attention of one, two, and, and Kells or Keels is going to get right back into it. But man, if you can shoot it and you're 6'10 and you can take their biggest player away from the rim who doesn't like guarding out here anyway, and you can do that all day, right now, that's a rough looking shot, but he can shoot it. And, we, and if you follow ball, you know he can, right? So we didn't get the back cut. We drag him away. He gets downhill to engage two. And you got to be able to make this shot, which he can. That's just a rough looking shot. Now, one pound, two pounds, half court, rim runner on the contest, wide. Kells has to get wider. Bancaro's just waiting because he knows. Boom. So we're going to give now. Boy, he looks real thin here. Kells isn't shooting that. I don't believe. He's 7 2, right? It'd be nice if he were wider where it wasn't a one step closeout. So he shows it. My man here in the stands thinks it's going up. It ain't going up right? If he drives it here, look what we have. Support, V back to the big. He's calling it. His hand's up in the air. He's saying, just throw it at the rim, right? There's the drive, and he does throw it at the rim. So, all right, we're going to stop with this because this stuff is pretty exciting. I like this stuff a lot. You have to understand this, man. 
you have to have a big that can run the floor, right? You're going to trail this. He's ceiling, doesn't get it. We run it into a ball screen. He goes downhill. We have 15 Williams is going to contest and run. He's running. Boom. He's running to the rim. Now, now look, he's already the, he's the first one down there. We show it one pound. He's pointing and talking. Nobody's on his body. Nobody's being back. Nobody's flooding the paint. We got two guys here. Timmy should be back. The ball's controlled with two guys, not three, but nobody has vision for the seven footer at the mouth of the rim. Nobody. Twice. Right? So my man just running the, running the floor. He hasn't had to do anything other than run the floor. And he's already got four points. Three minutes into the game. Right? And he's got a block shot. And he's just killing it. By running. Out of hand. Right? Out of control there. Boom. Okay. So we're going to leave it there. Listen, um, you know, subscribe and follow. I love talking ball. We only, I want, I'm going to stay with this game for a couple more episodes because I, 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 we've got the best players playing, right? And this is a, a, there's a lot here for youth basketball. There's a lot here for basketball just in general. I love talking ball. Subscribe to this, share it, please, um, if you made it this far. Um, but appreciate you, um, uh, appreciate you watching this. Take care.